This is one of the only luxury trains in America. Rocky Mountaineer's Rockies to the Red Rocks is a two-day train journey between Denver and Moab with an overnight stay in Glenwood Springs. Along the way, passengers are treated to locally inspired cuisine, world-class hospitality, and some of the most spectacular scenery North America has to offer. I'm Melanie Lieberman and my colleague Summer Hull and I hopped aboard to help you decide if Rocky Mountaineer is the right fit for your next adventure through the American West. Melanie and I have been dying to get on this train since we first heard the route was announced a couple years ago. It is so, so much of a bucket list trip. I can't wait. I think it's going to be spectacular. So excited. <laughs> Here we go. We are going to check it out and you're going to come along with us. All aboard. All aboard! All right, here we go. As we boarded the train, we were met with a coach car lined with giant domed windows and seats where we'd be spending most of our time taking in the stunning scenery outside. The train has about 54 seats per car. They're really spacious. Seats have seat back storage like this, a tray table that just flips down like that. Plenty of space to work, although you will not get Wi-Fi on this train, which honestly, is great. There are outlets, one per passenger. You do really have to just be deliberate with your plugs, but they work. Soon after we settled in, we were off, but not before being handed a menu and a mimosa. We've only just started and already I've got a glass of orange juice and Prosecco in front of me. Definitely better than any Amtrak experience I've ever had. Sorry, Amtrak. But uh, I guess this is uh, time to really officially kick off the journey. Cheers. Cheers! Breakfast has arrived. Unlike trains you might be familiar with, you do not have to get up to order from a dining car. Uh, someone comes around to take your order. The options are uh, eggs, sugar waffle with hickory smoked bacon, wild mountain berry parfait with a croissant. I don't eat bacon, but I get to have some vegetarian sausage on the side with my eggs. I'm really excited to dig in and try the food. We've got eggs and vegetables. So good. And I'm really excited about the vegetarian sausage. The fact that they can make substitutions is a really big deal. You just don't get that. So obviously this is a different experience when they bring the food to you, but we were talking about like the actual quality. So the last time I was put on Amtrak, I don't know about you, mine came in a box. Yeah, yep. I think mine came in a bag actually. So it was very similar. This has like house made cinnamon granola on top that not only did not come in a box, but is freaking fantastic. <laughs> We have access to two lounge cars. They both have pretty different vibes and very different configurations. And I will tell you, this is starting to be what I think of when I picture a luxury, old timey scenic train ride. This is one of two lounge cars we have access to. This is sort of like your business class lounge, if you will. Some communal seating, a really nice place to gather, to have a cocktail, to watch the view go by. Plenty of leg room. And then we're gonna walk through the vestibule. So I'm a really big fan of this lounge car. There's something about it. It has just more of that classic scenic luxury train aesthetic. Again, cozy seating. If you want a change of scenery, this is just a really cozy place to hang out. We'll probably come back here with Summer later to play some games. I'm a little sad there's no Jenga. I was hoping for the advanced, advanced version of Jenga. Some very theme appropriate train games, ticket to ride, trial by trolley, might have to do instead. Captain's log, it is uh, 2.38 p.m. Mountain time. We're mountain time, right? Yes. Okay, 2.38 mountain time and the scenery just got wild. It was pretty before. It was nice, um, but Scenery's definitely gotten a bit of an upgrade. Let me just show you. So we've got the fall foliage, the yellows, the reds, the blue river. This is American scenery at its finest. It is beverage hour. It's always beverage hour in my book, but we just ordered some uh, cocktails and wine uh, to enjoy while the train progresses. We are our three and a half. We're 
almost halfway there, so definitely time for a beverage, and I can hear the bar cart rumbling. I love that sound. I love having a gin and tonic poured at uh, 12.30 in the afternoon on a work day with uh, Colorado views in the background. Thank you so much. So we have a story we would like to tell because we are storytellers We're on We're storytellers, train. and um, so the host in the car was letting us know that this is a spot where he sees a lot of moose, he said, seemed like a dozen. So we're all peering out, looking Watching, for moose. Watching, waiting for the moose. There was not a moose. There were some women by the river uh, that decided this was the perfect opportunity for a double moon sighting. Which, can you blame them when you see these like oversized windows? I mean. <laughs> but cheers, you never know what you're gonna see <laughs> on the rails heading through Colorado to Utah. Okay, so we are coming to the end of our first day on board the Rocky Mountaineer. It's been a really, really relaxing uh, seven and a half, eight hours. Um, we'll have the evening in Glenwood Springs. For all travelers who are on board the Rocky Mountaineer, those midway stops like Glenwood Springs, the hotels are included. Um, I'm so excited because the luggage will theoretically be waiting for me in my room when I get there and should have my room key before I even get off the train. So talk about convenience. Uh, this trip really, really takes the logistical stress out of travel. It's been a long day, I'm tired. We still have dinner and hot springs is Glenwood Springs after all. We are here, welcome to Glenwood Hot Springs. Captain's log, 9.20 p.m. mountain time. I am exhausted. The hotel is a little disappointing, especially when you think about the price point of the trip and the experience we've had so far. But honestly, I'm so tired. I think I would sleep just fine. Even if they stuck me with the cargo, um, I think I would sleep pretty well. So tomorrow morning, uh, we have a really early call time. We are supposed to be at the platform at 6.30 in the morning. So I am excited to show you more of the train. And right now, I'm mostly excited to sleep. So with that, see you in the morning. Good morning. It is day two of boarding the Rocky Mountaineer. It is, like I said last night, early, early start to the day. It's still dark out. So I'm gonna grab some coffee and we're gonna get on board. The sun is coming out, but we boarded in the dark, so it's really nice to see the scenery come into focus. We all keep getting up out of our seats and running to watch the yellow aspen trees or the steam coming off the Colorado River. Summer, what do you think? I'm like speechless. <laughs> like I'm not really a crier, but if I was a crier, there'd be little tears. <laughs> it's freaking special this moment on the train. Thank you so much. This is the Colorado frittata with oven roasted yams and vegetarian sausage. Summer has a bake with a, a bake. lot of sugar <laughs> and sausage and liquid sugar, otherwise known as syrup. <laughs> You're gonna have to probably take the trip just to try it. It looks great. It looks good. <laughs> Breakfast yesterday was good, but this is this is it for me. The frittata is packed with vegetables. Uh, the breakfast potatoes are these spicy yam nuggets of joy. I'm pretty happy. Oh, so we did a pretty good job. Not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> we're only on the train for about half the time yeah. that we were on yesterday. Uh, so I know we've been talking about playing some very wholesome yeah. games. There's like traditional games like Sorry. It looks like such a romantic way to spend time on the rails, just playing the game, sipping your cocktail. Yep. So we'll have to try that, Yep. obviously. All right, let's see if I can beat Summer at a game of sorry. Sorry is confounding us. The rules are too complicated. Things have gotten more difficult than they were. Sorry, not sorry. Why can't every day? 
start with a fresh made Bloody Mary. And views of the American West, I don't know. The yeah, train does occasionally come to a stop and this is a great time to order a beverage, use the bathroom, really anything you need to do. Highly recommend doing it while everything is not moving. Each car has two bathrooms. You have a standard bathroom and an accessible bathroom. Uh, they have the same features. This one is bigger than an airplane bathroom. You've got your toilet. You've got your little flushing mechanism, uh, soap and water, hand sanitizer, and the accessible bathroom is much the same, but so spacious. So you can actually move around in here. Anyone who has ever had the honor of using an Amtrak bathroom will know that this is a serious step up. We have reached the Red Rocks officially. We are just minutes from Moab. Uh, I hope you all had a wonderful time, but how about a quick round of applause for Kendra? Woo! Big way to Thank you. We have arrived in Moab right on time. Uh, we were on board for about 12 hours, and we are uh, about to go off on our next adventure and uh, check out the area. We have made it to Dead Horse Point State Park. I mean, what did you think? Did it did it live up to your expectations? It did. I loved how it forced you to just enjoy the ride. Like you yeah. don't have a choice. There is no internet. There is no in-screen entertainment. There is yeah. there's no, you know, there's nothing other than everything. There's the eight hours the first day of views that just kept getting better and better. Let's talk cost. All right. It's not cheap. Uh, this is not your, this is not your Amtrak. Amtrak ticket. No. <laughs> it costs about $14.50 per person based on double occupancy. Yeah. So assuming you're sharing a hotel room with another person. And that includes your night in Glenwood. Honestly though, an experience I've never had before and yeah. may never have again. It, it's the kind of thing that you, if you want to do it, you save up for it and it's a special event. We, we saw people who were on their retirement journeys. Yes, um, a Special lot. moments. It's mostly couples, uh, which is why it is priced at double occupancy. If this is on your bucket list too, if you're as excited about luxury scenic train rides as Summer and I are, then absolutely, you know, watch for those prices to drop. Thanks for coming along on this uh, wild ride. It's been a journey that was <laughs> a bucket list level dream. And I think it overwhelmingly lived up to what I hoped. And it was one that's gonna stay top of the memory banks for years and years to come. Yeah, absolutely same.